Hey there, in this lesson we're going to be talking about a new type of function. It's called the arrow function. Not really creatively named, but appropriately named. So, what we do know is that when we create a function, it looks a lot like this. And we do know that inside this function, we can have, uh, instead of name, I'm just do counter, uh, is equal to zero. Um, and then we could uh, counter plus plus, type that wrong, counter plus plus. Uh, if this dot counter is equal to undefined, there we go. So every time we initialize this function, we're going to increase this counter. And we know that because the keyword this is bound to this function. That's not necessary all the time. In fact, in a lot of cases, when you're writing your own functions, it's usually just something small, uh, some basic math or uh, just some formatting or something. It's usually nothing major. And when it isn't major, you don't usually need the this keyword. Now, when you do need the this keyword, go ahead, create a function like this. However, uh, if you can, I would say go ahead and create a class because why not? You have access to classes now. That's amazing. Go ahead and use that. But an arrow function looks a little bit different and the way it looks might blow your mind. So we're going to say function name is equal to param1, param2. So we have essentially the way we declare an anonymous function, but instead of having the word function in there, which technically this makes it a little bit shorter, we just have our parameters. Now if you don't have any parameters, that's fine. You can just use the opening and closing parentheses and that works too. And then you have what's called a fat arrow, which is an equal sign to the greater less than sign. And then you have your object in here. And your object, you know it's an object because you have your curly brackets. So the point of writing a function like this is the this keyword no longer is bound to this function. Now, why is that a good thing? Because it comes with a lot less overhead. Your functions don't need the this keyword all the time. Unless you explicitly need it, I would say stick with arrow functions. Because if you don't need it, don't use it. And that is a, a good rule for programming uh, from now to basically the end of time, is if you don't need it, don't use it. We're all efficiency-based thinkers in the land of programming. So what I want here is uh, alert param1 plus param2. And I'm just going to demonstrate that function name, and I'm going to change that to add 1 and 94, nope, 94, and I don't know, 12, I don't know, random numbers. Anyways, all this is going to do is the same thing that a regular function does. When I go back to my page and I refresh, I get 107. It did the addition for me. But now let's take a look at the scope. How does the scope work? Well, we know in a regular function, if we have const name is equal to Caleb, that we can use the const in here, and that's fine. But what if we declare another variable in here? Variable name is equal to Caleb. Can we use this variable outside? Because it's not technically wrapped in a function wrapper anymore. It's just really wrapped in these curlies. So we can't use let or const because we know that it's going to be scoped to the curly brackets. What happens if I do alert name? I get something. Well, that's weird. What happens if I want some more information? Console.log, get the name, right? There it is. And we still only get something. So it knows that there is something there, but what is it exactly? What about, uh, let's do const. Can we get it outside of there? Well, we know there's something there, but, but that's about it. So in summary, you should basically just use arrow functions the same way that you use a regular function. The only difference is you're not writing the word function anymore. You're not binding the this keyword to the entire function because, well, it's useless. So now let's take a look at this. What I wrote there while I was talking was just name. I got rid of the var, I got rid of the const, and I just created a name variable. I give it the value of Caleb, and I was able to access that outside of the function. Now, as your assignment, what I would like you to do, two things. First is I want you to create an arrow pointer function. Basically, it just looks like this, uh, and these are your parameters. 
So I want you to create one that has parameters and another one that does not have parameters. And then I want you to create a regular function. Let's rewind a bit and go create a regular function. And in all of your functions, I want you to create a variable in there. And I want you to try to access that variable outside of the function. So inside of it, essentially, it'll look like function name, uh, name is equal to test. What happens when you write this? Name is equal to test. Are you able to access that outside of the function? And are you able to access that same one outside of the arrow pointer function? And what this will give you is an idea of how scope works. So if you want to take this just a little bit further, what you can do is instead of just writing name, because we should know how this works when we use var versus not using var, what happens when you use let or cons? What happens when you have let name is equal to something, uh, something here, you have name, you have your name here, and here it's being changed. In here, it's being changed because closure allows us to access this variable inside of functions. What is the end result? 